Hello, everyone, and welcome to Amago Season 1, Episode 44, Prepared and Processed for the Gift. I'm your host, Vanessa Brown. Beloved, now we are children of God, and it has not yet been revealed what we shall be, but we know that when he is revealed, we shall be like him, for we shall see him as he is. 1 John chapter 3, verse number 2. Welcome again to the Amago podcast. I am delighted to be with you. It has been um, a fun-filled week uh, and weekend for me. We just finished up the Women of Empowerment Conference, and what a dynamic conference it was. We had uh, some great speakers from Nassau and the Bahamas, um, and also Dr. Tori Phillips. So it was just fantastic to to be with them, to, to hear the word of God that they brought forth. Um, and what I would like to do tonight is talk about some of the same things that were mentioned at the conference, but also a culmination of the things that we have been talking about over the past few weeks. And so the title for tonight is Prepared and Processed for the Gift. And it is going to be based on um, what we have studied over the past three weeks, uh, the scripture from Mark regarding James and John, um, also what we learned about um, King Uzziah and about this gift, this gift that uh, Jesus has left for us. So I want to start off this evening by just reminding us about Mark 10, 35 through 45. That was our original scripture where we were talking about how James and John um, were jockeying for position. And for us to really understand and realize that there is nothing we can do about trying to force our way into positions that Jesus did not um, prepare for us or Father God has not prepared for us because we all have a certain position to fill in the body. We are all given certain qualities and uh, our personalities, they are for a reason. They are because God is preparing a position for us to fill. And in order to fill that position, we have to be careful about putting ourselves in places where we don't belong. One of the things that's mentioned to us in the Bible is in Philippians chapter two, verse three, when it says, do nothing out of selfish ambition or vain conceit, rather in humility, we should value others above ourselves, not looking to our own interests, but each of us to the interests of others. And so even as we are deciding what positions we should occupy or fill, we should be looking at that and questioning that from the lens of Philippians 2 and 3. Because it's not about how much money we can gain from positions that we, we seek. It's not about the fame. It's not about the fortune. It is about what is the purpose? Why do I want this position? Do, do I want the position because I think it's going to bring me some type of notoriety? Or do I really want this position because God is calling me to it and it is, it is what he has made me for? And that's how we should be processing um, when we are considering positions that we are taking. I have I have worked with a lot of people and I've seen a lot of of things and it doesn't matter how much money a position pays you if you are not happy if you're not fulfilled I want to say I don't like even using the word happy but if you're not fulfilled by the work that you're doing then it doesn't matter how much money you are paid right it doesn't it doesn't matter the accolades that you gain from the position because there is still going to be this void within you. And so we are to seek positions based on what God has prepared us for and how God has prepared the positions for us. Um, and one of the questions that we ask over the last few podcasts was, do you know what position you've been called to? Or are you just seeking positions on your own? Do you know what position God has called you to? 
God did not prepare the position on Jesus's left or his right for James or John. And so they were asking for it. They were seeking the position, but the position was never theirs. It was not theirs. And Jesus told them that that position was for who God had prepared it for. And so that leads me to believe that God has prepared positions for each of us, right? And one of the biggest dangers of putting ourselves in positions that were not prepared for us is that we're not prepared for the position. And we mentioned in the previous podcast, an example of this is when the disciples try to cast out the demon and the boy and they couldn't do it. That became a struggle for them. And that's what happens to us when we put ourselves in positions that we are not prepared for or that God did not prepare for us. The position becomes a struggle for us. And instead of looking like we're strong and instead of being able to bring any glory to God, we find ourselves in positions of embarrassment. But God said to Jeremiah in chapter one, verse five, that before I formed you in the womb, I knew you. Before you were born, I set you apart. I appointed you as a prophet to the nations. And so God has a plan and a purpose for us. He knows the position that he wants us to occupy while we are here on earth. And as we occupy these positions, we also, I found out this weekend, um, we also have responsibility for that. And so we have to be very careful in wanting to assume positions that we were not called to or positions that were not made for us, right? Romans 8 and 30 was another scripture that we used when we were talking about prepared positions. Romans 8 and 30 says, and those who he predestined, he also called. And those he called, he also justified. And those he justified, he also glorified. So again, going back to this concept that God already knows the position that he wants you to fill. It's why, why he sent you to earth. You came to earth with an assignment, right? So he has predestined it. He is going to call you when that position is ready so that you can fill it, right? And then when he calls you, he justifies you. He He marks you. He He knows what is inside of you. And that is why he called you. So that that is the meaning of you being, you're justified, right? And those he justified, he also glorified. Notice that when, when God has his hands on a person and has prepared a position for them, they do the work and it's effortless. It's, it's almost as if they are really enjoying it. It's not hard for them. And there is glory that comes on them. And there is glory in the work that they do. And that's when you know that you are in your prepared position, right? It is something that you can do without, without much thought. You enjoy doing it. Um, and people around you see you doing the work and the work looks so easy that they try to do the same thing, but it doesn't work for them because you have been predestined, called, and justified for the glory of that particular position. Amen. Um, and then we talked about uh, process. Mm, I could stay here all evening. Process is defined as a series of actions or steps that are taken to achieve a particular end a particular goal. It is a series of actions or steps that are taken in order to achieve a particular end or goal. There is a process for us to receive our prepared positions. The problem is most of us don't like going through the process because the process ends up being situations and circumstances. The process ends up being maybe us being um, isolated. The process is being placed somewhere where you're stretched so that you can learn new skills or concepts, um, a new way of thinking. But all of these are examples of the process before we can take the prepared position. And the reason why we have 
to go through a process is because we are here on earth. And here on earth, the earth, the earth realm is influenced by the work of Satan. And one thing is that is in us oftentimes is pride. I know people can pretend to be humble, um, humility, people can practice it and it cannot be real. But most of us have to go through this process or God takes us through this process because we have to get rid of pride, right? Pride is this presumptuousness, this arrogance um, toward both man and God. It is disobedience toward the men and women of God. And, and pride is also like this being boiled up or seething, right? And so what I learned from studying this is um, I can tell when I am beginning to operate in pride, when that feeling, that boiling up starts to to come through if somebody says or does something and I am offended. If I am offended by it and it begins to make me boil up, then I need to check myself because it is pride in operation and God hates pride. So before he can put you in the position that he has prepared for you, that has to be processed out of you and say what you want, but you didn't walk out your mother's womb saved. And so you have years of worldly influence in you that has to be worked out of you because you can't operate in God's position with the spirit of pride running rampant in you. So we go through a process where pride is worked out of us, right? And the important thing is, is that our process, our circumstances, these situations where God is teaching us and showing us ourselves, our process is based on whatever our position is. And so you, you need to always remember that everybody's process is going to be different. Everybody goes through different stages. Everybody goes through different tests and trials to work out what is not of God that is in them. And you should never, ever compare your process to anybody else's. Again, I'll mention the fact that when people see you operating in your prepared position, once you are prepared, they think they can do the same thing. But our stories are all different and your process is going to be different as well. The final thing that I want to um, talk about or mention is this idea of the gift. And we find in John chapter 17, Jesus is praying to his father in heaven and Jesus makes three distinct prayers, right? Jesus prays for himself. Jesus prays for the apostles and then Jesus prays for those of us who are going to believe in him through the word um, of the apostles. And I, I was amazed to learn that one of his prayers distinctively says that he has given us glory. That is John 17 and 22. He says, I have given them glory that you gave me that they may be one as we are one. And so when I am mentioning this gift, I am not talking about the gift of the Holy Spirit, even though that is a gift, but did you know that Jesus gave you glory? And now the question for most of us is, now what does that mean? What is glory? Glory has several different meanings in theology. And so I'm learning as a Christian, right? We use these words, but we really don't know what they mean and we really don't know how to apply them. But glory in this sense means to appear, to seem, to think, or to accept. It is exercising your personal opinion, which determines value. Exercising personal opinion, which determines value. Glory is God's infinite intrinsic worth. It Glory is God's substance. It is God's essence. It's everything that God is made of. It is the invisible qualities of God made visible. So Jesus said, I gave them 
the glory that you gave me, right? That they may be one as we are one. I just want to deal with the, the A part of that verse. I have given them the glory that you gave me. What glory did God give Christ? What glory did God give Jesus? God gave Jesus all of his infinite intrinsic worth. He gave Jesus his substance, his essence. Jesus is God, right? In human flesh. So we need to know that Jesus is saying the same thing that my father gave me, I am giving to them. I am giving to you. So we have it. We have this intrinsic worth, the same stuff that God is made out of, right? His invisible qualities, his substance, his essence. That is who and what we have inside of us. Now, the issue or the problem that we can say is that a lot of us don't either understand or accept that Galatians 2 and 20 says this, I have been crucified with Christ and I no longer live, but Christ lives in me. The life I now live in the body, I live by faith in the son of God who loved me and gave himself for me. So it's no longer me because I died. I was crucified with Christ and I no longer live is what Paul is saying. But Christ lives in me. And if Christ lives in me, then the same essence, the same qualities of God that Christ had, I have in me. Mm, do I believe that? Do I believe that? Do you believe that? Because you have to believe it in order to receive it and understand that you have this infinite intrinsic worth, that you have the substance, the essence of God living in you because Christ lives in you. It, it's no longer, you, we have to stop thinking about ourselves as the old self, right? That person who you were was crucified with Christ. That means. The old you is dead. And we as Christians, a lot of times have this um, issue of always bringing up people's past, always thinking that their past is who they are. And again, I, I say this often on the Omega podcast. We also are very ashamed of what we have come out of because for some reason we think that that's still who we are and it is not. I have been crucified with Christ. So it's no longer I that live, but Christ lives in me. So when you see me, you should see the essence of God, right? You should see the manifestation of the presence of God, which is another definition for glory. That is what we are supposed to, what we're supposed to grow to, what we're supposed to be seeing at this point. We become one with Christ in principle and in purpose. We become one with each other, both in principle and excuse me, purpose. Just as Jesus reflected God and did only what he heard from the Father, so we reflect Christ and do only what we have heard through the word. And therefore, we become, as, as the conference so beautifully uh resembled or showed us this weekend, we become glory carriers. We carry the glory of God. We carry the glory of God when we have been prepared and processed for the gift of glory that Christ has given us. And so I implore you to get that revelation that it is no longer you but it is Christ that lives within you and he lives within you. He gave you a gift, the gift of glory. And so you don't have to worry about anybody else's position. You don't have to worry about anybody else's process, right? Because you have been given a gift. You have been given the glory of God. You are a glory carrier. Thank you for joining me this evening. Please make sure 
that you download the Amago podcast on Spotify if you can. Check out the notes section and there is a link that allows you to support the podcast by subscribing. You can visit our website at omegohim.com to check out all of the coaching and leadership development services that I offer. You can find me on Instagram at Amago Him or join me on Facebook by typing I M A G O. Be sure to like and share the weekly reels and posts. Please email me your comments, or your questions, feedback, anything that you want to hear or talk about on the Amago podcast. Please email me at, at Amago Him at gmail.com. We'll see you next week. And until then, we shall be just like him.